Hello, everybody. God bless you. I've got a few minutes tonight to get into the Word of God with you regarding faith and living by faith. And so we're just going to open up in a word of prayer really quick. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this time in your Word. Father, we thank you. Your Word is so good. In your Word, when we hear your Word, when we hear it preached, when we hear a word from you, God, that faith comes. So we thank you that faith can come to us and that we can live by faith according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're talking about, uh, uh, we started off talking about can your faith fail? And, um, uh, and last week or two weeks ago, I talked about living uh, faith to live by. So uh, we, we discovered or we discussed together how faith and belief, okay? First of all, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38, it tells us that the just shall live. Hebrews 10, 38, let me read there real quick. Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. We also know that in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. So why would God? So we're called to live by faith. We're called to walk this life out. We're called to... Uh, raise our families. We're called to uh, be healed. We're called to walk in peace. We're called to live this life. It implies this life. We're called to live this life by faith. Amen. We also found out in Romans chapter 10, or we looked at Romans chapter 10, I'm sure you know it already, that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the question is, can your faith fail? Not if you're operating in the God kind of faith. We already discussed that. If we're operating in the God kind of faith, what is the God kind of faith? The God kind of faith is the kind of faith that is produced. We can have faith in people and faith in things, but faith in God and the God kind of faith is a result of God himself and his word. We found that in Romans chapter 3, 12 and verse 3 that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So God is not unjust that he would call us to live by faith. Isn't that right? To call us to live by faith and not give us faith or at least not provide a way for us to get faith. So when we got born again, we got born again because we believed in our heart what we said with our mouths. That's how salvation works. Amen. And so that's the way that we are called to live by faith. We're called to live by faith. We are challenged in every aspect of life. We live with people. We live, we are not, we are not immune to challenges. Uh, the Bible even says that don't be surprised of the fiery trial, which is to try us because the trying of our faith is precious. So we are called to live a, life, live a life where our faith is tried, but it's something that we all have to go through. So we're, we're always challenged. We're challenged as believers. That's why I like teaching about faith, because we're constantly being challenged in our faith. We need to know that the God kind of faith will always get, get us through. Amen? Uh, let's, let me... Uh, grab my paper over here. Um, so we found out the faith, faith and belief. Faith is a noun, which means a person, place, or thing. We found out that faith means to be, it means persuasion and it means conviction. But the word belief is comes from the root word of faith, but belief, it implies action. If you look up the word belief or believing, it's an action word. It's a verb. So therefore, when we have faith, our belief is our acting on 
our position. We talked about uh, faith being a fixed pos position. Well, the dictionary, uh, the two, the definitions of faith is persuasion and conviction. But the dic dictionary, um, I thought it was helpful because the dictionary describes conviction as a fixed or firm belief or position. Look, we're called to walk by a fixed and firm position of faith. What happens to us then? So there's nothing wrong with faith. Faith is a law. We found that faith is a, spirit, a spiritual force. Uh, faith is a servant even. Faith has been given to us to work for us and to serve us. And just like God said, when he speaks his word, it doesn't return to him void. God designed it so that the, faith, the God kind of faith, we can speak the word of God and trust, fully trust that our faith being a servant to us is going to bring us back what, what we said. I, I was just thinking today, and, and, and I'm sure just like you, we should uh, constantly as Christians, we should be taking the position that, look, I want to get to the place because faith works um, or faith is released by our words. When we read Mark chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, we see that our faith is released through our words. Faith is a law. It works every, it works, it's designed to work every time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you've given us the ability or you've given us a law. You've given us something called faith that is designed to work every time that it never fails. So the God kind of faith does not fail, but we fail. We mess up. We draw back. The, uh, our faith works. The God kind of faith, it works every time. And so, so we can't blame God when we don't see something come to pass in our lives. We have to look at us. We have to examine ourselves to see if we be in the faith. And so believing is acting on our faith. It's acting on our faith. James chapter uh, um, 2, uh, it, it says that faith without works is dead. Isn't that right? James chapter 2, that faith without works is dead, all right? In verse, um, uh, James chapter 2, verse 22. Here we go. James chapter 2, verse 20, 22. And it says, uh, why can't I find the verse? That's what I get for using different versions of the Bible. Uh, it says, therefore, last side, I won't read that. It says, verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Um, and then in verse, uh, verse uh, 16, verse 17, it says, um, in verse 26, James uh, 2.26, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So faith without works, that word works, it means corresponding action. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. It says, You see that his faith was cooperating with his works, and his faith was completed and reached its supreme expression when he implemented it by good works. Uh, it, you can also say that first, uh, that faith apart from works or cor corresponding action, that, that was my note that I put in my Bible, that works means corresponding action. So we, how do we know that we have faith? Because there's corresponding action. So if we believe that we're healed, then we act like we heal, we're healed. We talk like we're healed, Right. If we, if we believe, um, uh, um, if we believe that we're prosperous, then we begin to talk like we're prosperous. We begin to act like we're prosperous, or I'm not saying spend the money you don't have yet, but you begin to, to prepare, to do actions of faith, to prepare yourself to, to for prosperity. Amen. Um, and, um, so faith is, is, a, is a, a fixed position. 
We get messed up when we move off of that position. Uh, I heard uh, once say, I think it was uh, Kenneth Copeland, he said that faith is, is, um, is a quality decision, and a, a quality decision is something that you don't turn back from. So how, why do we get messed up? Why do, does it look like our faith is failing? Is because we decided to draw back because we were faced with different things in life, and that's why uh, I like to teach on faith because we are constantly being challenged, right? We're constantly being challenged, but God has called us to win. He's designed for us to win. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got many notes and little time. <laughs> Many notes in little time. And so we've been called to live by faith. Amen? So, and we're to operate like Abraham. Abraham, he was believing God, that he was going to be the father of many nations. And so we too, as believers, we have to be fully persuaded. We have to be fully persuaded just like Abraham in Romans 4.21, we have to be fully persuaded. That's having faith. That's exercising our faith. We are fully persuaded. What happens is we, we get faced with situations, and if we're fully persuaded, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter what we're going through or what happens contrary to, to the promise of God that we're believing for. We, we can't look at it. The scripture says in Romans 4 that Abraham didn't consider his old aging body. Why? Because he, can, he, can, he continued to stay in his fixed position to believe God that he was going to be the father of many nations. And that God, when God told him that I'm going to give you a seed and I'm going to bless your seed and through your seed, I'm going to bless all the nations of the earth. Amen. So Abraham decided he was just going to believe God. He had never seen this, this thing happen in his life uh, before, but he was going to believe God. So faith is our conviction. It's the position that we take, but our belief is acting on that, um, on that position and on that belief. I want us to look at Luke chapter five and verse 17. And I just want you to give this some thought. Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. When, the, when we ask the question, um, uh, how do we know we're operating in faith? Okay? And tying in faith with actions or faith, uh, tying in our faith with our, our believing. Amen? Jesus often said, he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen? I'm going to read... Um, I'm going to read, I don't know why I'm just, to, in fact, yes, there you go, Verse, uh, chapter 5, chapter 5, Luke chapter 5 and verse 17, and it says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, I want us to stop right there and pause right there because it said in the beginning of this verse, it says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching. It was talking about Jesus. And it said, then it said, first it said Jesus was teaching, talking about Romans 10, 17, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. What happened? Faith was there. Jesus was teaching because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or hearing what the word of God or what the gospel says. And it says suddenly the, uh, suddenly, uh, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Verse 18, then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed. So these men, they couldn't get through the crowd on the ground. So they said, 
we know what, we're going to take Johnny up on the roof. Wow. We should be so determined, right? And they let him down with his bed through the til tiling into the midst before Jesus. Verse 20, when he saw their faith, I'm going to underline that in this Bible, or I underlined it in another Bible earlier. But in verse 20 in Luke chapter 5, it says, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven. So what I wanted us to look at tonight is that, is that faith can be seen. How? How was this man's faith? He, him, the man, and his friends, the ones that let him down, they had faith. They had a persuasion. They had a conviction. They had a fixed position that they were going to get their buddy healed. And, and in verse 20, it says, when Jesus saw their faith, what did he see? How did Jesus see their faith? He saw their faith by their actions. It's the same thing with us. How do we know when we're operating in faith? Because we have corresponding action. People should be able to see our faith by our actions. People should be able to hear our faith through our words. Now, and then, it's, it, then it says, because these men were just like Abraham, they were fully persuaded that if they could just get their buddy, their paralyzed uh, uh, buddy, or, or whoever he was, a cousin, uh, a relative, whoever it was, that they were fully persuaded if we could just get him into the presence of Jesus, that he was going to get healed. Amen. And so it says there uh, that the that the the power of the power of God was present to heal. It was the the power the power and presence of God was there to heal. It was there to heal who, whoever, a whosoever. The God kind of faith is really for a whosoever. Whosoever shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So God has called us to live by faith. How do we know that we, we're operating in faith? How do we know that we're operating from a position of persuasion and a position of conviction that we're operating from a fixed position because we're going to see it. People are going to see it. We're going to see it. We're going to just act like, look, this thing is true. This thing is true. If you're believing God to get out of debt, then you're going to act like you're going to, you're going to act this thing out where you're going to start getting, getting yourself ready. Amen. You're going to start, um, you're going to start, uh, believing God and, and moving towards getting out of debt by paying your bills by stop uh, spending money, right? We're, we're believing God that we're healed by, we're, we're going to stop buying all kinds of equipment. You know, um, you know, you know, when I, when I injured my toes, I realized that I started going around looking for different kinds of sneakers, you know, like my toes were going to be injured forever. And I had to catch myself and say, Connie, you're making room. You're making plans for your toes to be injured forever. So that wasn't moving towards or, or that wasn't uh, acting in faith. I was acting like um, that I wasn't healed, that he wasn't watching over all my bones, that, that, that none of my, I wasn't acting like none of my bones were broken. I was suddenly starting to act like, okay, how many shoes can I buy to, to match this, this foot that I'm dealing with right now? So, so faith is, is acting on the word of God. Amen. So God has called us to live by faith. Uh, we have to uh, put ourselves in a position that we are fully convinced uh, that God, um, you know, the scripture says that all the promises of God are yes and amen. So God has given us faith to live by. It's not going to fail. It's not going to fail. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says that God doesn't fail or, or love doesn't fail. 1 John 3 says that God is love. So does God fail? No, he doesn't fail. And so the faith that he gives us, it cannot fail. But we can fail. We can draw back. We can get 
moved off of our position. And that's why it's so important for us to understand how faith operates. Faith is we walk by faith and not by sight. So we don't walk according to our nat the natural conditions. We don't walk according to what we see. We don't walk according to what anybody else is saying. The God kind of faith comes from faith in God's word, in God's word alone. So when we operate, when we decide that we're not going to operate in unbelief, but we're going to operate in faith, that means it doesn't matter what anybody else is saying. All we care about is what God has said. Thank God for faith. Thank God that he has dealt to us faith because that it's the God kind of faith. That's the only thing that's going to cause us to see the desires of our heart come to pass, to see our family restored in Jesus' name, to see our uh, all of our um, uh, everything that concerns us in life, our, our, our health, our, our strength, our, our, our mind, our will, our emotions, every aspect of our lives, it's going to require faith for us to live by. Amen. But thank God we... God hasn't left us without power. He hasn't left us without his faith. We can believe anything. We can believe anything and have faith in anything that God says. I want to mention this one last thing. When the centurion, when they came to the centurion, uh, Jesus told, asked Jesus to come lay his hands on his, uh, his, his, his daughter. And they came and they said, uh, "Master," they said, "They said, just leave, uh, um, just leave Jesus alone, because your your daughter is dead. I I think it's his daughter, not his servant." And Jesus said, "Wait a minute, wait, look at me, look at me. We already talked about this. You already told me what you were believing for. You already explained to me what your fixed position was. When they said that she was dead, Jesus said, "Wait a minute, don't fear." I like to see it this way. Jesus said, look at me. Don't look at them. Look at me. Don't look at them. Don't listen to what they said. You just look at me. And I say, I say, and you said, actually you said, he, the man had faith. His words uh, uh, demonstrated or were a witness to what he was believing about his, his daughter getting healed. His actions, he was walking towards his home. Right, Jesus got delayed, but he was at, he was walking towards uh, his home so that he could see his loved one get healed, and he got distracted. He got distracted by what they said. Jesus said, "You listen to me. You take my word. You believe in my word. You believe what I say. The just shall live by his conviction. The just shall live by his." faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, I have um, just thank you so much for joining me again uh, uh, for uh, Wednesday in the Word. I just want to remind everybody uh, as the as the summer, oh my gosh, as the summer's coming to an end, today is September 1st, uh, but I want you to be a part of our text blast. So I want you, uh, so if you want to be part of our text blast, you can just text LFCC, uh, text LFCC to 313131. And that way you'll be part of our text blast. If there's any important message that uh, needs to come out, you'll be informed. Amen. Well, I love you and bless you. See you later. Bye-bye.